Peace Presence Ministries at Kadia Mega Church. And our vision is a very simple one. It's about restoring lives, raising champions, transforming families, communities, cities, and nations. Mm. Amen. And if God is going to use anybody to touch and change the world, He's going to use you. Amen. Amen. You know, you need to look at yourself as a candidate that God can use to touch and change the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, Amen. this thing of delegating and thinking, oh, God is going to use Pastor Stan or God is going to use so and so, mm -hmm. that thing has got to come to an end. You yeah. need to look at yourself as the one that God is about to use to do something great in this world. Amen. Amen. Look at yourself that way. You know, this one time, uh, you know, this whole week, this past week, I was, I was just in prayer, you know, and I was just praying. And I was praying for what's currently happening in the nation, you know, as well as the world where COVID-19 cases are, are rising, are spiking. And, and also, like in our nation, there's also like death taking place where people are dying. Um, and it is say that they are dying from COVID-19. And as I was praying and I was, just, I was just talking to God, you know, the Lord said to me, um, pe people do not, my people do not have poor immune systems. Yeah. The Lord said to me, my people do not have poor immune systems. But then he said they have poor support systems. They have poor support systems. Like the only thing that somebody needs to, to be victorious in life is just somebody whispering in their ears and saying, I'm standing right here with you. You can do it. Yes. When you read the scriptures in the book of Genesis, the Bible says it is not good for man to be alone. And I know everybody takes it to saying a man has got to have a wife, but what it's actually talking about is talking about a community. Like you cannot live in isolation. Mm -hmm. It is not the will of God for any of his people to live in isolation. Amen. In isolation. See, God is simply saying people have to be part of a community. They need to belong somewhere. Yes. That is why there has to be a community of believers. Mm -hmm. Like the most special and most important community that anyone can ever belong to is the community of believers. Amen. No wonder why you should surround yourself with men and women of faith. Mm. Men and women that believe in God. Mm. Because when you surround yourself with people that, that do not have faith, that do not trust in God, trust me, you will die. Yes. Especially during this particular season of COVID-19. Mm. Because you might just test positive for it. Yes. You might just test positive for it. And if you do not have a proper support system, you end up having a weak immune system. <laughs> and that will kill you. Yes. That will kill you. So the problem is people focus on the results, but they're not focusing on what is causing that. What is causing it is a lack of a community. It's a lack of a support system. You know, some time ago in October last year, uh, I was at a birthday party. It was during COVID-19, but you know, we there was... It was a post opportunity to set his birthday party. So there were just a few people invited, though the place was a bit small, but um, there were just a few people invited. I think there were less than 50. Less than 50 people who attended that, uh, that birthday. And amongst the people that attended, there was, a, there was a lady. Her name is Zaza. She's a famous radio uh, presenter on some radio station. I don't, I don't remember which radio station it is. But she was there. And she was talking about how she tested positive for COVID-19. I mean, obviously, when you talk about testing positive for COVID-19, and here we are, we're in a tight <laughs> space. <laughs> like, what are you doing here? You tested positive for COVID-19. But the beautiful thing is, she was, she was just sharing her testimony on how she battled and survived. Like, she said she had severe symptoms. You know, severe symptoms. She was not asymptomatic. She had serious symptoms that she herself thought, hey, she, I might just die from this disease. But the only thing that, according to her testimony, that made her survive was the support system. People that loved and people that cared and people that stood with her during that particular time. Like the only thing that people need during this particular time is a, is a support system. Yes. It's a community of believers. Amen. It's a community of believers. Um, so never live in fear of COVID-19 but rather be there to stand and strengthen those that may be infected. Amen. Amen. Let them know that you are there with them. Yes. You are there with them and you are standing with them and you are believing God for them mm -hmm. as well as with them. And you are telling them that you can beat it. You can win this battle. Amen. You are not defeated. Mm -hmm. You can make it. You know, because the problem is 
What's currently happening dur during this particular time is the very same thing that happened during uh, the HIV and AIDS pandemic, when HIV, you know, you know, became really a really serious issue. I would like to believe it was in the 90s, where where a person would have a cup of their own. No one would drink from that cup. And that person will have a spoon of their own. And they'll have a plate of their own. As far as the family members were concerned, this person is already dead. <laughs> and whoever shares stuff with them, that particular person is also going to die. So imagine when people look at you and consider you dead. I mean, what's going to happen to you? You're going to die. You can't recover when people look at you and see a dead man. Yes. You know, because they're not giving you that support. They're not giving you that encouragement. They're not telling you that you can beat it. They're not telling you that you can fight it. They're not telling you that you can win it. What, they are sim what they've simply done is they are just waiting for that day when you die. <laughs> and even if they're going to cry, but the thing is, as far as they're concerned, you had died already in the house. Because you realize those people, there's HIV patients, you know, they'll, they'll be old. All on the bad, and you know, no, they're all skinny, lost flesh, similar because of what happens in the mind. Mm -hmm. If you look at it very carefully, from then that's when they started doing counseling sessions for HIV <laughs> patients, mm -hmm. and they started telling people that HIV and AIDS does not kill people, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. That's what they started telling people HIV and AIDS does not kill. Mm -hmm. Because what would happen is that when a person is told you've got HIV and AIDS, immediately their hair would just begin to flow, begin to flow, and all of a sudden they begin to lose weight. But they were fine all this time when nobody told them they had HIV and AIDS. Everything about them was okay. Till the day they were told they've got AIDS. And that is what's, and it's like literally the same psychology. It's literally the same thing happening this particular time. That the moment somebody is told you've got HIV and AIDS, you've got COVID-19, without proper counseling, that person will begin to die. Which is like the very same thing. A person has told you have cancer, and you have stage four cancer, and you have four months to leave, or you have six months to leave. And this particular person, though they were in pain, but it gets even worse. Yes. Especially when they are told you have only but four months to leave. There was one character in our community who was told he had, he had four months to leave and he pushed 20 years. Uh, he, he passed away just a few, a few weeks ago. His name was uh, Vivian Kelly. I, I don't know if you guys knew him. Uh, Vivian Kelly, uh, married to, to um, Auntie Amy, Amy oh, Robinson. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, he had been told more than 20 years ago <laughs> that he had four months to leave because he had cancer. But he pushed 20 years. Simple because it's, it's, not, it's not what the doctor says, yes. <laughs> it's what God says. Mm -hmm. You know, you know it's, it's when it's time to go, it's time to go. Yes. When it ain't time to go, you're not going anywhere. Yes. You're not going anywhere, you know. So the scriptures tell us and it says, whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the media report or are you going to believe God's report? Mm -hmm. Because God's report is by the stripes of Jesus you were healed. Not that you're going to be healed in the future. No, you were healed already. And the healing is already at work on the inside of you. You've got the healing grace and the healing anointing at work on the inside of you. And the only thing that you have to do is you have to tap into that which is already on the inside of you. You're not getting it from anywhere else. It's already there on the inside of you. If you have received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, you have received the healing grace. Yes. You have received the healing anointing. Amen. It's already there on the inside of you. So when it's like that, there is nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to be afraid of. I remember this one time uh, in December. Um, there's a, there's, you know, a friend of mine. He's more like a brother to me. He had gone to South Africa for some time, but he was only meant to come back in a very short space of time. But then he, he stayed there longer because when he wanted to come back, he tested positive for COVID-19. But you know, when he came from South Africa, uh, there he was. Um, I mean, I'm happy to see him and he's happy to see me. 
and we, you know, you give somebody a hug because you're excited to see them, isn't mm -hmm. it? So there was, I gave, I gave, you know, we gave each other a hug and we're so happy. And then just a few seconds afterwards, he says, the reason why I didn't come home soon is because I tasted positive for COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just thinking about like, dude, and you're giving me a hug. <laughs> But you know, this is all to say that um, it's only God who has the capacity and the ability to protect us. Yes. It's only God who has the capacity and the ability to protect us. protect us. To protect us, you know. And people, people love, people love being affectionate. People love, you know, they 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 love being to be loved, and at the same time, they also love to. Love others. Yeah. It's just normal human nature. Yeah. Which simply means that when that is withdrawn, it might result in death. Mm. When that is withdrawn, it might result in death. Yeah. Like imagine those people who loved putting. There are people who literally love putting. Every Friday they're out putting. And then all of a sudden there is a lockdown. Mm. They can't go anywhere to party no more. Mm. But these are... I think maybe they'll be called party animals, globe trotters. They are just all over the place enjoying themselves. And then you withdraw that from them. That will just result in sickness. That will result in death for some. Yes. I forgot my notebook, so I'm taking notes on my phone. Okay. Don't think I'm on WhatsApp. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's okay. Don't think I'm on WhatsApp. No, it's fine. I understand. And, and these people, like for instance, I, I personally believe that what may have what may have resulted in one of the first deaths of COVID-19, you know, when they speak of the Makamba boy who passed away, I would like to believe that it was isolation, being taken away from from the community, because that young man was a party guy, that young man was all over the joint enjoying himself, and then you confine him to a room. And he's no longer experiencing that love that he's used to. What's going to happen to him? His immune system is going to fail. Why? Simply because his support system has failed. You see, people do not understand the importance of a support system. Yes. One of the most important things in life is a support system. The reason why a lot of people are broken, miserable, and hurt is simply because of a support system. It's because of a support system. Support system is key. It's really important. You know, there's this uh, lady who was just telling me about about a child, um, a child of a of her relative, who this is not this is not about COVID nineteen, but just general life. This child was was on drugs and was doing all kinds of things, and it is they strongly believe it is because this child never felt loved by the mother. And the mother was serious about it. The mother loved everybody else except this one child. Every other child got privileges except this one particular child. And this child came out broken, came out a mess. Unfortunately, the child died recently. But this child was never loved. And now this particular, now the child is dead, the mother now behaves and acts like she loved her child. And yet she mistreated and ill-treated him when he was a little child to an extent that he ended up on drugs, ended up doing all these other nasty things simply because of a poor support system. Like what we need in this life is a support system. Yes. People need to know that there's somebody that is there for them. There's somebody that is there that cares for them. There's somebody that is there that genuinely loves them. That genuinely loves them. That genuinely loves them. And then, you know, when, when, when we speak about this element of support systems, the other thing that we also need to look at is, is that in a support system, people do hurt each other. They do hurt each other. But you're not supposed to harbor that bitterness and that hatred against each other for long. See, the Bible is very clear. The Bible says, do not let the sun go down in your anger. And then it says, least you open a door to the devil. 
least you open the door to the devil. You see, if you allow yourself to go to sleep in anger, what's going to happen is that when you go to sleep, you're opening a portal for the enemy to then come in and begin to tell you stuff. Because you notice there are some people, like for instance, you're worried, you just don't fall asleep instantly, isn't it? So many things are going through your head. And now you're going to sleep and you have this bitterness, you have this anger, and now the enemy takes an opportunity. Because when you're about to sleep, you're also like vulnerable. So the enemy takes an opportunity and it begins to whisper even a lot more crazy things to you. And then destroys a relationship that could have been restored, that could have been mended. And when he destroys that relationship, what he's simply doing is, is that he's destroying your support system. And when he destroys your support system, He's eventually going to destroy your immune system. He's going to destroy your immune system. No wonder why you hear that people, some people actually have cancer simply because of unforgiveness. Failing to forgive might actually result in somebody contracting cancer. They are now a cancer patient and now they have four months to leave. Why? Simply because they just could not forgive. They just could not forgive. So when you look at it very carefully, you realize that as human beings, we have been created in such a way that we need each other and we could not live alone in this world. See, there's that English statement that says, no man is an island. None of us is meant to be an island. None of us is meant to be on our own. Because the honest truth is you can have people but still be on your own. You can be surrounded with people and still be on your own. And sometimes you're on your own simply because as far as you're concerned, everybody hates you and everybody's out to which you. I've, I've come across people like that. They're so convinced that everybody is out to which them. No one is nice. <laughs> Everybody mm -hmm. is a witch. I just don't know how that works. How can your entire family be filled with witches? And you're the only right one. Everyone else in the cabin is a witch. How did that happen? How did you become the normal one in this house? And everybody else is a witch. Because I think if everyone else is a witch and you're the only right one, something might be wrong somewhere. It might be that you have what they call paranoia. You are one paranoid person. There is that possibility. I'm not dismissing that your family might be filled with witches. It might be true, they may be there. But at the same time, you might be paranoid. And, and, and because of paranoia, you are now isolated. You're kept away from that fellowship and that communion that, is, that should be experienced in families. You see, the Bible is very clear when you read in the book of Psalms, the Bible tells us that God sets the solitary into families to bring them forth out of prison into their full prosperity. <laughs> into their full prosperity. See, God wants you to experience prosperity. He wants you to experience peace. He wants you to experience divine health. And he has deliberately instituted families in order for that to happen. In order for that to happen. No wonder why you realize that 